thank you, Honourable Speaker, I rise to contribute to this debate. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on Tuesday, um, during debate uh, to uh, note the contents of the first semi-annual report, the uh, Honourable Attorney General labelled my comments as uh, gratuitous sarcasm. But he failed to address the fundamental issue that I raised, which was first highlighted in Parliament in May last year by the Honourable Leader of the Opposition, which is the waiver of procurement regulations and abuse of tender process by the Honourable Attorney General, Minister for Economy, in awarding Corvus a consultancy contract of USD 2.295 million, or at the time a little over 4.658 million Fijian dollars. Mr. Speaker, this was a clear abuse of authority in gross violation of the procurement regulations, and this is the document that clearly proves this abuse. It describes Corvus as a member, as a friend of the Fiji government. Mr. Speaker, there is no mention of Corvus in the second semi-annual report, and I hope uh, it will be in later reports that will come before Parliament. At the same time, Mr. Pal uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to ask the Honourable Attorney General to state whether or not any other firm providing services to the COP23 presidency received such a waiver of procurement regulations and tender processes. Why I'm asking this, Mr. Speaker, is that, after, uh, is that last year, after changing the name of the COP23 presidency to the Climate Change Trust Fund, there was another amendment made to delete specific reference to procurement regulations and make general reference to Financial Management Act 2004. I hope that the wave of procurement for Corvus uh, was not repeated, but um, it is for the Honorable Attorney General to state whether or not that happened. Now, Mr. Speaker, on the note of transparency and accountability, just before we broke for lunch, the Honorable Attorney General, while commenting on the audited accounts of uh, the National Federation Party and the donor list uh, provided to the Elections Office uh, and sent to him as Registered uh, Officer and General Secretary of the Fiji First Party, uh, that he was reading from, uh, commented that I should know what is happening in my party. I certainly do, Mr. Speaker. As a Vice President, I'm a member of the Management Board. We recently had a successful Working Committee meeting and will, on the 26th of September, hold our, our next annual general meeting. We are transparent and accountable. And we're not a two-man rule who, under the Fiji First Constitution, are the only two people eligible to become party leader. No AGM, no Congress, and an undemocratic constitution that violates every democratic norm, including the 2013 Constitution and the Political Parties Act. We find it strange that despite having such a draconian constitution similar to the unjust and feudalistic 1990 constitution that entrenched key positions, Fiji First was still registered. No wonder transparent procedures were trashed in respect of waiver of procurement regulations when it came to the COP23 presidency. And by the way, Mr. Speaker, Gosfulia is not only puri and goat curry, it is also appetizers and beverages. And the Attorney General knows this very well, but it's probably well below the standards, well below the standards and the top-notch menu that Fiji First has when it has its fundraisers with the who's who of the business community at venues like a luxury home in Domain in Suva, in bar at the home of a director of a hardware giant, a posh residence in Simla, Lotoka, thank you. Uh, of a Sugar City businessman and a first and a first class restaurant in Denera. And yes, Honorable Attorney General, a Gosfolia event was organized to fundraise for the National Federation Party at Katria Hall in Suva on Sunday, the 21st of October 2018. And that was the same evening that the Attorney General at a first uh, at a Fiji first meeting at Samambula Primary School told voters before feeding up Boat Palau that not supporting the Honorable Boregan by Nimaram in the elections would be akin to putting a dagger to their necks. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I suggest that people who live in glass houses do not throw stones at others. Thank you.